You're still watching ways. Now, artificial intelligence is likely to be the best or the worst thing to happen to humanity. These are not my words, but the words of Stephen Hawking, the foremost English theoretical physicist and cosmologist. Today, we are being joined by the futurist, Thomas Frey, who has built an enormous following around the world based on his ability to develop accurate vision of the future and describe the opportunities ahead. Thomas Frey founded the Da Vinci Institute. He spent 15 years at IBM as an engineer and designer, where he received over 270 awards, more than any other IBM engineer. He's also a past member of the 999 Society, High IQ Society, over 99.9 .9 percentile. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Waze. Thank you so much, Thomas, for coming today. Well, thanks for having me on here. <laughs> All right, I think I would let um, Uti go first. We have many questions for you today, so we need to, we need to okay. take it quickly. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we've talked about a lot on the show uh, is the health sector in Nigeria and literally how deplorable it is. So if you were to predict a trend for the future, what could technology or what could, what could the future do for healthcare, particularly in a cost-effective manner, seeing as a lot of people here can't afford it to be too expensive? Yeah, you know, um, I just came back from the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and there was there was one interesting device there that caught my attention, which is um, oh, it was kind of an egg-shaped device called the Bodio, okay. and you you actually you go and sit in it, and it actually performs, uh, I believe, eighteen different tests on your body to tell you um, how your health is. Now, being able to do accurate assessments quicker, faster, cheaper than ever before, <clears throat> that's, that's the trend line. But if we, if we look at a, a bigger, um, kind, of a, kind of a bigger picture view of, of our overall health, what's, what's really our goal? I mean, do we want to, do we want to, you know, fix human aging so that we can live a lot longer? Do we want to be able to repair people after an accident? Do we want to cure deviant behavior? Uh, do we want to cure all the diseases that are out there? So once we're able to do all of those things, then uh, it's this question that, we, that we've been battering about called, um, uh, so should we ever die ever? Um, and is that our goal? Mm -hmm. And if not, why not? It becomes a real interesting a discussion point. So we can, if we can cure all these things, should we? Um, because there's lots of ethical issues about all of these things, the can we, should we issue. I mean, if I can 3D print a new body for myself, if I can clone a new body for myself, should we do that? Mm. Should I move from one person to another person to another person? Um, should I take everything that I have in my head and put it online somehow so I digitize my mind so I exist forever in the cloud. Well, should we do that? Yeah. Um, so there's lots of ethical issues. I just want to cure the common cold. I, I just, that would be a huge step forward. Yeah. I, I hate all the people that are getting cancer. I hate all the people that are getting all these other diseases. The coronavirus right now is taking off like a rock. All of these things, we need to find cures for them very fast. Um, we're still really bad at that. So we have a long ways to go. For the future of health. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, interesting. Um, based on what we have looked at um, in um, climate change currently, yeah. and uh, climate change has caused a lot of buzz uh, all over the world, yeah. global warming and uh, weather conditions. As a futurist, how do you perceive this? Yeah, uh, climate change is not a term that resonates well with me because when I hear it, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Now, if I hear pollution, I know what I'm supposed to do about pollution. I would much rather just stick with the pollution Specifics. topic because people understand that better. Um, so if, you're, if, if somebody says you need to fix climate change, I'm not sure what that means. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's stick with pollution and, and that's, that we can get everybody on the same page much quicker because nobody's in favor of pollution. 
everybody knows we have to do something. So, so that's, that's kind of an initial step, just getting everybody on, on the right page. Mm -hmm. But there's you know, just a f few people around the world that make all the decisions about pollution. Um, they, they decide to go with this product, they decide to run this type of engine, they decide to do this or do that. Um, some of the biggest polluters in the world are the shipping companies and the airlines. I'm part of that problem because I, I don't know another way to get around the world, so I fly lots of places. Um, but the airlines are big polluters, okay. uh, and the shipping companies are big polluters. Now, there's been conscious decisions made to try to correct that, so it's, it's going to take a long time because it requires entire new technology to develop electric aircraft that can fly across the skies, to develop electric ships that can travel across the ocean. It's gonna take a while to get there, but we're, we're moving in a better direction than we have been in the past. Um, when we have things like when we put everything into a trash can and then we bundle it up in this little plastic bag that we throw into the trash, yeah. then, then all of our trash is layered in these thin film plastics that we need to do something with that. Mm -hmm. And we haven't made this plastic so it's biodegradable. That's, the, those are things that we can focus on that will have near-term effects. Yes. Yeah, and, and we can kind of just look our way through all of these little details in our lives. How can we do this better? And uh, there's some people just focus on the, the problem. I like to focus on the opportunity. And every problem creates an opportunity, and that's where the entrepreneurs, that's where the people that can really understand uh, how they can change things, they, they will make the difference in the world. Absolutely. All right, so I'm happy you're talking about entrepreneurs, and you know, for us, we're in Africa, right? Yeah. And we have a lot of um, underdeveloped countries. You know, we're still in the third world, yeah. you call us, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and we know that we, we have a big problem when it comes to population and housing, for instance. So when we're talking about finding solutions to um, the problem, because um, recently on the show we had, I mean, two amazing architects on the show, and we're talking about how we can build, um, build structures that would accommodate our population, because I hear we're going to grow yeah. In, in 20, what's that? 2030. 2030. What's yeah. the, what will be our population? We'll be the third world largest, China. you know. Population. So tell me, how do we look at the future of housing for us in third world countries? You know, what yeah. do we do to solve this population problem? Yeah, there's, there's actually lots of different ways of looking at this. Uh, do we live on an overpopulated planet or do, do we live in an underpopulated universe? It's the same issue, just from different perspectives. Uh, again, I like to look at the opportunities, not the problems. So having, having the people are what creates the economy. If you don't have people, you don't, you don't have a good economy. If you only have two people in the world, you only have a very limited economy that's just trading back and forth between those two. If you have 100 people in the world, is that an economy that's 50 times greater than two people? it's actually much more because there's many more lines of trade yeah. that you can create. Now that's, that's just a real simple example, but um, theoretically uh, a population of 700 million people will be greater, th uh, the economy will be greater than a population of 400 million people. So th that's something to keep in mind. So how do, we, how do you manage all of these people? Um, some of the technologies like 3D printing being able to 3D print an entire building, an entire house in less than a day. That is already in use. Uh, there's a company out of Austin, Texas that is, is 3D printing entire neighborhoods down in Mexico right now, testing this out. And they can print these houses quickly, cheaply, um, and with very, very limited notice. And so then you have housing that didn't exist just a couple days ago. So. And both is there. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that might be one solution. There's, there's lots of ways of coming at this, though. We're going to become a much more transient society um, as, as different forms of transportation come about, as we become um, the driverless technology is going to extend okay. out the metropolitan areas, the cities. And so it'll be real easy for somebody to commute in 
uh, and out even if they're two hours out of town. A lot of people are only going to have to come to work maybe two or three times a week and they can stay productive in this driverless car okay. while they're commuting back and forth. So the cities will extend farther out. That means there won't be so much pressure on the center parts of the city. And so it changes the supply and demand equation for housing inside of a city. Um, there's, there's lots of issues like that that are shifting and changing. Um, as we move into a drone world, where we have drone taxis that can yes. fly us from one part of a country to, to another. another. Yeah, um, and hopefully we don't have Kobe Bryant issues, mm -hmm. uh, which is mm -hmm. such a sad mm -hmm. story. Really sad. sad. Yeah, um, but uh, so whenever there's a, a crash like that, there's mm -hmm. so much attention on it and people get scared to fly. Exactly. But, but actually flying is the, the safest, safest form of yeah. transportation right now. Um, in the United States, we actually spend half a trillion dollars a year fixing people after car accidents. Wow. It's just an enormous amount of money just repairing people after the car accident. We just come to accept it. It's a very dangerous form of transportation. Um, and if we eliminate that, that's, that works out to one out of every six dollars in the healthcare system is spent fixing people. Now that hopefully is going to go away. If we can get the, the ground transportation system even close to as safe as flying in the air, um, it's, it's going to be such a dramatic shift in society. It's interesting how you can put a figure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how you can put a figure to um, road accidents in the US. Sadly, we cannot put that figure, but I can tell you if the government were to be spending money on road accidents, it would have been maybe triple that amount in Nigeria, yeah. if We're they were spending that people. money in and, trying to fix people. And they actually had the, the statistics, um, yes, because we have, I mean, our roads are... <laughs> the road network is those. <laughs> it's one of the... Well, let's leave it there. <laughs> All I'm right, okay, we'll okay. <laughs> Yeah, the one, th one thing I don't get in Nigeria is, is speed bumps. I don't get speed bumps. <laughs> so... Because, because the roads are already really rough. Really so. bumpy. Exactly. So it's, it's like the roads are already it's built. So They're built out of speed bumps. It's yeah. so interesting because I was in the U.S. <laughs> and I drove from Atlanta, right, all the way to San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. 14 hours. I did not... I didn't go through one single dot bump. of a pothole. Yeah. 14 hours. Mm. No single pothole. And here... We have, <laughs> we have craters on the road, we don't even have... And then we go and create some more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they yeah. were banned in the UK yeah. probably about 20 years ago. Sleeping policemen is what they're called in the UK. Were banned. But people don't understand the science of traffic over here. So the fact that every time you slow down, you're creating traffic behind you, but it's a, it's a whole <laughs> yeah. different thing here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it's interesting the, how much, when I was doing the research, I, and how much you've talked about all the different areas and aspects of life. You, you have trends and you have visions for you know every part. But I want to talk about finance because we have a huge um, underbanked population out here. And financial inclusion has become something that's very important to our government, to our central bank. And a lot of the banks and even um, mobile money companies, we have all sorts happening here. People just trying to, to grow that space of financial inclusion. What can we do or what can technology help us? What's the trend? What should we look out for in the future? Yeah, uh, giving people access to a device that can do all of these transactions. Because the, the whole world lives and dies by transactions. Uh, it's these financial transactions. And every company out there has um, it, their survival depends on doing enough transactions to pay the bills. And so we have a vested interest in, in creating a system with better, more efficient transactions. Um, now, the people who have run the transactions in the past, which traditionally the banks, um, they have a very myopic way of viewing this. Now, the tech world is coming in and challenging this idea of doing transactions. And when Google came out and said that they're going to start offering checking accounts, that was kind of the shot heard around the world for the banking industry, because uh, Google is way better at marketing than any of the, the banks are. Uh, virtually any other company in the world, they're better than them. And, and so uh, the, this idea of 
going from point A to point B through this transaction, it's something that's, that we don't talk much about, but it's such a simple little thing. And there's very little difference between a banking transaction and a tech world transaction. So how can it happen quicker, faster, cheaper? Um, we're, there's a lot of people that are exploring that because that's where a lot of the opportunities lie. Now, whenever, whenever I talk about this emerging technology, um, we're on the verge of creating tons of new micro industries. And these micro industries are gonna define the business world in the future. Um, now, because of this emerging technology, it gives people literally anywhere on the planet access to this technology and they can set up a little mom and pop business uh, in their backyard or their garage and start doing business with people all over the world. Right now, Amazon has 604 million products that they carry on their website. That's almost a big number, and it's going up. Absolutely. And there is huge opportunity, not just with Amazon, but lots of other companies too. If you create a new product here in Nigeria, you can market it anywhere in the world. And, and that's, that's important to understand because um, all of this emerging technology is creating new starting lines for new micro industries. The things that we're gonna have 10 years from now, there's lots of things that don't exist today. Anybody in the world can create them. They can create, the, they can begin as the leaders of this new industry. And they're waiting for somebody to take the lead. Um, quite frankly, you have more risk takers here mm -hmm. than virtually any other country in the world. Absolutely. And, and that's what defines a good entrepreneur. Okay, so, when, sorry, um, just to follow up on that. So what would be the role of, um, sorry, or the place of security? Like securing funds, especially with the rise in internet fraud and what's it called? Cryptocurrency. Uh, not not oh. really the cryptocurrencies. You know, right now, there's a lot of financial fraud happening all yeah. over. So how would this affect, you know, what would the future look like for, for fraud? Is this easier? You know, in terms of, is this a safer Prevention. means, yeah, in terms of people getting defrauded and all of those? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I don't happen to be a cybersecurity <laughs> expert, but um, we're, we're on the verge of entering the quantum computing era. Now, when you, when you have a quantum computer uh, that's, that's efficient and functional, it, we're only a short distance away from being able to break all of our current encryption systems. So we're gonna have to move to a new quantum era of encryption. Um, we still have to get to a state of reliability with quantum computing. Um, there's, there's lots of other issues with that. Uh, blockchain becomes breakable as well because that's, that has its crypto keys in there. Yeah. Um, so we, we have to reinvent a lot of things to make it <coughs> quantum compatible. But once we do that, then it makes it much more difficult for the hackers, the, mm -hmm. the, the problem people, um, to create issues. Um, we, we also create new lines of traceability. And so the artificial intelligence is actually gonna come into play because they're able to track people down that maybe we're causing problems as five, 10 years ago. Oh. Yeah, so we'll be able to track back and, cause, and see who was the cause of these different incidents. And just because somebody's getting away with something today, this may come back to haunt them in a big way. Absolutely. I, I think that, that should send chills down the spine of somebody who's oh. doing that right now. Doing that right now. <laughs> 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 okay. Quickly, you see, we didn't have so much time. Okay. Um, Education in Nigeria and Africa um, in general um, is not balanced. There are some areas or bigger schools that are able to, you know, afford certain technologies in educating children. But there are some schools that do not have these, um, um, they don't have access to funding or um, right. or the materials to be able to, or tools to be able to actually educate these children or create um, an enabling environment for the children. So how do you perceive education in the future for Africans? It's, it's a great question. And uh, again, I'm certainly 
don't have all the answers, but um, the, the technology is getting cheaper. Um, so these smartphones, smart devices, computers, the prices are coming down, which makes them more accessible. Um, and, and so that will be part of the equation. But um, education, there's no one size fits all form of education. I mean, if I'm going to teach somebody to become a bricklayer, they actually have to lay bricks. Exactly. Um, it's not digital bricks, real bricks. <laughs> uh, so you have to get the touch and feel part of it down. You have to get a sense of how that looks and uh, looking at it from different perspectives. So um, we're going to come at education from a lots of different uh, vantage points. Okay. And, and over, the f or, over the coming years, uh, it looks to me like we're going to create AI-enabled teacher bots that are going to hyper-individualize education for every student. That they will, uh, that's one of the problems with our education system today, it's a one-size-fits-all. One size exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, throw that kid in the classroom, they've got to learn. They're on their own. Mm -hmm. And not all kids know how to, how to yeah. do that. So they have so, to now tailor it to the individuality of that child. Yeah. And will this and, be affordable to African nations? Will um, be affordable I believe it will. I believe it will. I believe that this is going to uh, um, cut the legs out from under all of the high priced education systems out there. That would be awesome. B because, um, because we're going to pretty much demand this never-ending stream of education. Mm -hmm. If it's that easy to learn, I want to learn more. Mm -hmm. And I want to learn this topic and that topic. And it's going to learn what we're interested in. It okay. will learn when we're distracted, when we're not distracted, what best times of day to learn things. It'll know what skills we currently have, what skills we're deficient in, and it'll learn how to bring us up to speed on Absolutely. some new tasks that we're trying to do. Absolutely. And, awesome. Very interesting. and awesome. once somebody figures this out, it's going to scale like a rocket. Uh -huh. It's going to scale so fast that uh, suddenly it'll just take over, permeate every corner of society all over the entire world. Mm -hmm. And um, where it took Facebook eight and a half years to get to a billion users, I think this will happen in less than a year, maybe six months even. Wow. It'll take off like a rocket. This, this is what it looks like to me. Um, our, uh, what, what's the name of the company? We don't know what the we name of the yet. company is. <laughs> I think it's going to come out of the way. We'll, we'll, we'll find a risk taker. <laughs> we'll find a risk taker in Nigeria. <laughs> All right, so you know what? We'll go on a quick break. We we'll still have Thomas spray with us. And um, Nasa will join us. Like I said, it's a special, so stay with us.